Hi, in this video, we would learn about maturation promoting factor or MPF. Nowadays, we know that MPF is nothing but a complex of cyclene P and CDK1. Together, it works like a phosphor phosphorylation enzyme. So it phosphorylates several downstream targets and it's CDK1 is serintrionine kinase and its activity is modulated by cyclin B. Cyclin B is specially important at the mitotic phase of the cell division and its expression level or its concentration also increases at that particular point of time. So in this video first we look at how cyclin B and CDK1 that means the maturation promoting factor was discovered that would help us to understand that how this complex is actually helping in the cell cycle. Everything started in 1970. In 1970, John Gayhart was working on Xenopus. Now the Xenopus has their distinct size of uh, eggs or oocytes. Now he isolated the Xenopus oocytes and when the Xenopus oocyte which were arrested in G2 in an immature state was injected with progesterone, what happens is it really matures to meiosis 2, a metaphase blocked oocyte, ready to be fertilized. So this process is known as the oocyte maturation. So some substances such as progesterone lead to oocyte maturation. And this is true, mostly progesterone help in maturation of the oocyte, right? Now they wondered that what molecular level changes is occurring while progesterone is injected. In order to understand that, they hypothesize that something soluble in the cytoplasm was changing. So they injected the frog with progesterone and then took out its mature oocytes. From the mature oocytes, they took out the cytoplasm or did a cytoplasmic extract. They were biochemists, so they were always interested about extracts and everything. And using the micro injection based experiment, they injected it into an immature uh, arrested oocyte in G2. And what happened was amazing. The oocyte, which was immature and was sitting in G2 phase, after injection with the cytoplasmic extract from a mature oocyte, it quickly matures. That suggests that some soluble substance is present in the cytoplasm that leads to the maturation of the oocyte. And that is why they named this myster mysterious substance as maturation promoting factor. It leads to maturation of the oocytes. It's also known as mitosis promoting factor as well. So this factor, people want, wanted to understand that which phase of the cell cycle this factor is important and its concentration is high. Now clearly they have an assay. They can take the cytoplasmic extract from a cell at any point of time and inject it into the oocyte which is arrested in G2, a immature oocyte. And the assay read out if the oocyte is matured, then the MPF activity is present. A simple but elegant enough biochemical assay. Using this assay, they figure out. I mean, before they figure out, they were there are like a couple of questions that what is the sub soluble substance? What is the chem chemical nature of this soluble substance? But the assay that I was talking about, they figure out that the MPF activity was elevated during meiosis one, meiosis two, the first mitotic division and the second mitotic division. So while the cell is dividing, just before that, the activity of the MPF is really increasing. Still, it does not solve the problem. What is the chemical nature of this soluble substance, which is known as MPF? By the same time, Tim Hunt was working with C. archin embryos. Now in C. archin embryos, they are pretty much big and it is really easy to track their division and that is why what he was doing 
was completely different, nothing to aim to discover the MPF. He was studying parthenogenesis. But however, he did one experiment. After fertilization, he wanted to look at the cell division kinetics and that is why he took out sample at regular interval and ran that in a gel. When the gel was developed, and that time it was radioactive development of those gels, he found that there are a lot of proteins, but sub-proteins are consistent throughout the cell cycle, though there are a little bit fluctuation in the levels, but they are consistent throughout the uh, cell cycle. For example, in this particular blot, the protein bands marked by Y and Z, they reliably appear in all phases of the cell cycle and all time points. Strikingly enough, one or two lanes he saw that some proteins increases gradually and then just before the division, just before the cells divide, their level drops. And he tried to quantify it in terms of the band intensity and some sort of graph is obtained like this. This thing, if he superimpose with the cell division time, it just looks like this. Just before the cell division, cell is about to divide, the protein is degraded. A little bit time before the cell is about to divide, its activity was pretty high. This graph has a striking similarity with the graph of MPF activity. Does that mean that MPF is actually this mysterious substance which is cycling in a particular interval? He named this substance as cycline because it has a cyclic appearance and disappearance. That is why he named it cycline. Now what happened is, in from the sea, sea uh, urchin embryos, he took out or purified the cycline B using column purification because that's the golden era of biochemistry. Not only that, cycline B C DNA was cloned. After that, using that same cDNA, a Xenopus cDNA library was scanned. And hybridization experiments confirmed that indeed there is a homolog of cycline B present in Xenopus. Question is what it is doing and how it is related with the MPF. Now, in E. coli, the cDNA of the Xenopus oocyte was cloned and a protein was bulk purified. Then it was actually injected in mice to perform hybridoma and perform a mo monoclonal antibody. Using that monoclonal antibody, they assayed and lo it looks like this monoclonal antibody which is specific to cyclin B actually detected some substances inside the Xenopus oocyte. From the purified MPF activity, from the purified fraction where people find the MPF activity, it also gets detected by this specific antibody. Indeed, this experiment suggested that cyclin B is actually a component of maturation promoting factor. That was amazing at that point when experiments from two completely different model organisms done by two completely different type of scientists, a cell biologist and a biochemist, together lead to the discovery of this amazing molecule, cyclin B, which is a component of maturation promoting factor. The other component of the maturation promoting factor, which is CDK1, was actually discovered by a geneticist in yeast. So completely three different model organisms lead to explanation of a biological phenomena. Now we know this maturation promoting factor is so important on in the onset of prophase. In the onset of prophase, maturation promoting factor phosphorylates nuclear pore subunits, which leads to their dissociation. Not only that, lamines, which are actually support to the nuclear envelope, is actually phosphorylated. Lamin is an in, uh, intermediate filament which has three important domain and in the main domain the lamin is phosphorylated by cyclin B which leads to dissociation of the lamin filaments from each other. 
once lamin is collapsed the nuclear membrane also collapse and that's a key event in the prophase right which is triggered by maturation promoting factor not only that maturation promoting factors level started rising after s phase and it really peaks at the end of g2 and mitotic phase right at this point of time maturation promoting factor is also important to prevent the re-entry into a replication state so replication happens only one time in the cell cycle now but it turns out the origin of replication complex is bound all the time how this is triggered then it turns out some triggering factor such as cgd1 and cdc6 are phosphorylated and in this phosphorylated state they cannot reattach to the orc and maturation promoting factor actually maintain this phosphorylated state and as a result maturation promoting factor can prevent these triggering factor to bind to orc and reinitiate replication but at the but what happens is like at early g1 phase this maturation promoting factor is degraded by ubiquity annihilation and proteasome mediated lysis then what happens several phosphorylase or D, uh, or phosphatase enzyme can come and dephosphorylate these triggering factor that is why in s phase assembly of this triggering factor can take place in the origin of replication and the origin can fire and start a new round of replication in the s phase that is how the strict balance between phosphory phosphorylation and dephosphorylation and phosphorylation by cycle in bcdk1 complex ensures that replication is restricted to a specific time window so in this video we not only looked at how the discovery of mpf took place we also looked at how mpf works in several phase of cell cycle and helps in cell division so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you